Good morning. My name is Gigi. Prof. Gigi, 14 June 2020, my message with the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. My message is concerning the border. I remember 2018, I was given my prophecy to the nation Israel that I see a border conflict between Israel and the other nation. This is what is going on underground. I pray that God give you wisdom to make a right decision because it affects so much when this is to happen. We will continue to pray for a nation Israel and the other nation in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music> Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The circle of Jerusalem's peace continues to grow with the Kingdom of Bhutan and the State of Israel jointly announcing the establishment of full diplomatic relations. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu praised the United States under the leadership of the Trump administration for its unyielding efforts to roll back Iran's regional aggression and thwart the Islamic Republic's frantic race to a nuclear bomb. Speaking alongside visiting U.S. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, Netanyahu re-highlighted the presiding regional consensus among Jerusalem, Riyadh and other Arab capitals in all that pertains to curtailing Tehran's malign regional and global aspirations. Under President Trump, the United States and Israel are working Together, closer than ever before, we cooperate together to foil common threats. We cooperate together to bring about peace. And in both areas, we've produced amazing results. The Abraham Accords have brought about historic breakthroughs for peace with four Arab countries, the UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, and now with Morocco. And this is creating enormous excitement in Israel. Amid a projected shift of power in Washington, the Israeli premier sought to signal to the next presumed Biden administration that a change of policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran would spell detrimental consequences for an already volatile region and beyond. And our close uh, national security cooperation is also evident in our efforts to roll back Iran's aggression and stop its frantic race to the bomb. Instead of coddling the tyrants of Tehran, President Trump has adopted the policy of maximum pressure. This is a policy that I have to say is widely supported across the Middle East. Both Israelis and Arabs praised President Trump when he pulled out of the failed Iran nuclear agreement, when he reimposed and beefed up tough sanctions on Iran, when he took out the Iranian arch-terrorist Qasem Soleimani. The American National Security Advisor, for his part, relayed the significance of President Trump's so-called maximum pressure campaign, emphasizing a simple fact acknowledged by a majority of Western intelligence agencies that the Ayatollah regime allocated significant funds accumulated from those it attained as a result of the 2015 nuclear agreement for the purpose of advancing its malign foreign policy. The Mullahs in Iran have been contained and what's critical is their revenue has been reduced to the lowest levels in history by the largest economic pressure campaign ever instituted since the end of the Cold War. And what that means is the money that was coming from the JCPOA, the $150 billion in sanctions relief, that didn't go to help the Iranian people. And, and, and we have nothing against the Iranian people. I know Israel doesn't have anything against the Iranian people. But the money that could have gone to them to help their middle classes, to help their people, was instead given to terrorist proxies throughout the region to wage war on Iran's neighbors. And that's been cut off. Both Netanyahu and O'Brien also seized the opportunity to magnify the positive trend of peace in the region, welcoming Morocco's decision to normalize relations with the Jewish state, which was announced on December 10th. When Israelis and Arabs agree on so many things, it makes sense for the world to pay attention. After all, we live in this region. We know something about it. Uh, and as long as Iran continues to subjugate and threaten its neighbors, as long as Iran continues calling for Israel's destruction, as long as Iran continues to bankroll, equip, and train terrorist organizations throughout the region and the world, and as long as Iran persists in its dangerous quest for nuclear weapons and the means to deliver them, we shouldn't go back to business as usual with Iran. We should all unite to prevent this major threat to world peace. I say world peace because today the Islamic Republic of Iran is still a neighborhood, a nasty neighborhood bully. But if unchecked, Iran tomorrow will arm itself with nuclear-tipped ICBMs that can target Europe and America 
and it will become a global bully which will endanger everyone. All this must be prevented and all this can be prevented. Uh, the momentum is now on the side of the peacemakers like the Prime Minister, King Mohammed VI, uh, Prince Mohammed bin Zayed, Prince Salman bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and Prime Minister Abdullah Hamduk. Others will follow because the way to peace is far better than the way offered by terrorists, strongmen, and radical clerics. It is interesting to know that a wide-ranging number of senior political officials in the Kingdom of Morocco, from both the governing coalition and opposition, voiced dismay over the newly established relations with Israel. While omitting the king's role in the decision, Officials from the ruling Justice and Development Party, which holds a similar ideology to the one promoted by the ruling Islamist AK party in Turkey, described the agreement as a sad political move. Nevertheless, they sought to highlight that their king, Muhammad VI, maintains steadfast support for the Palestinians and his opposition to what they refer to as the Zionist occupation.